How is it going guys and welcome to the Olufemi channel. We're a group of teachers that want to shore up your video production skills in as little time as possible. Guys, in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to turn a boring static poster into a moving animated masterpiece. And how's it going guys? Josh Olufemi here. Um, what I want to do is I want to actually show you guys real quick or as quickly as possible how to create an animated poster. I am going to open up this uh, Photoshop file right here. This is a poster that I actually just got from one of my bros, Samuel. He's actually hosting a concert um, that's going to be for Nigerian artist Rayma. He is a really cool pop-in artist right now in the West African scene and he's currently on an American tour. And this is the flyer for the concert, the Los Angeles leg of the concert, that is literally a bunch of Photoshop layers. I'm going to show you what it looks like real quick. So all these text layers are editable and we can blind them all. Um, and then we have a solid picture. And what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to go and I'm going to want to animate all of these text layers as well as the picture in After Effects just to make the, you know, make this poster postable on say Instagram, make it more engaging, add some movement instead of it just being a, a flat picture. So. First things first, I'm going to try to do this as fast as I can. I want to add a little bit of movement to the actual photo. So I'm going to want the background to move and I want him to move. How do I do that? I'm going to have to, of course, pop him out of the background. How do I do that? I'm going to then, I'm going to go over to the quick selection tool and I'm going to simply draw inside of him. Create a clean mask, or not mask, a, a, a clean selection of just him. Perfect. If I make any mistakes, if I were to say go out, you can hold Alt down and reverse the selection. And that looks pretty clean. All right, let's duplicate this. Duplicate this layer. Control Shift I to do the inverse. Now I'm going to do delete on this top layer. Okay, cool. Now I'm going to go click on the move tool and I'm going to unblind this layer. Control D to deselect. Control D to deselect. Okay, now you can see that I have this top layer of his head that is separate from the bottom level layer of everything. Um, let's actually rename this. Let's rename this head. Let's rename this layer background. Cool. Now what I want to do is I want to make this be just straight background. I don't want anything underneath. So what I want to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to go to the clone stamp tool and then I'm going to make it smaller by clicking on the left bracket and I'm going to hold alt down. You hold alt down, you're going to be able to take the information from one area and apply it to another area. A lot of you guys have probably used the clone stamp tool before if you've used Photoshop. And we're done. Now let's uh, turn all of these layers on. Let's see what we did. We can see that we now have Rayma successfully cut out of the background. Let's do a control S to save. And um, let's do one last thing. Um, do you see how Wahala Room is on top of him? I actually want to do this. I want to put his head over on top of Wahala Room because I just think it, it looks, it looks, it look, there's a little bit more depth when it looks like his head is covering the text. So I like it that way. Guys, we're going to pause for a short ad. So you're a Premiere Pro video editor, you gotta check out this transition pack that the team has made just for you. These transitions are meant to give your high-paced edits just a tad bit of extra oomph. They are easily tweakable, they play very light in your timeline, and they're just a ton of fun to mess around with. These hundred transitions require no installing, no plugins, and work perfectly in the latest edition of Premiere Pro. And check this out, with every purchase, I'll throw in the entire Olufemi Creative Pack absolutely for free. This includes three additional transition packs, the Box Lens Transition Pack, the Camera Snap effects pack and the identity transitions pack. In addition to that, it also includes three of my light leaks packs. There's the bloom light leaks pack, the light opal light leaks pack, and of course the sea glass light leaks pack. The Olufemi creative pack is valued at over $119 alone. And again, you get it for free 
when you purchase the Track Mat Transitions Pack today. Every single pack that you're about to download comes with an unlimited license that allows you to use all the transitions and all the effects in as many videos as you want forever. So what are you waiting for? It's time to take a leap, try these out, and tell me what you think. It's time to get back to the video. All right, control S to save. Then let's cancel out of here. And then we're gonna go open up After Effects. All right, let's create a new project. Let's save it. What we call it, uh, let's save it underneath in the right folder, one second. Let's call it Rayma Animation. Enter to save. All right, let's create a new composition. Let's name it Rayma Animation as well. And um, I like this aspect ratio. I'm gonna have the width be 1080 and the height to be 1350 because that's a portrait aspect ratio in um, Instagram. Let's change the frame rate to be 24 and then we're gonna do okay. Cool, now let's right click import file and what file are we gonna import? Of course, we're gonna import the photo. Let's go over to the right folder Animated poster, full photo, main Rayma poster photo. This is very important. You should import it as a composition. Um, make sure that you have uh, it uh, editable layer styles checked so that the individual layers will be separated inside this composition. And we're gonna bring this into the main comp timeline window. Okay, cool, so perfect. What do we have? We have the entire photo with all of its layers inside of this composition. Let's scroll on the mouse to zoom in and let's uh, size this up correctly. 36 of them is good. Let's bring, the, let's bring it the resolution to full for now. All right, perfect. Now what are we gonna do? We wanna animate this puppy. So let's click into this composition. Let's zoom out, scroll out a little bit and see what we have to work with. All right, um, I guess we have another composition that we have to click through and there we go. Here are all of our layers in their glory. So what I now wanna do is I want to animate things. So let's uh, blind everything except um, his head and the background. What I wanna do is I want the, the background to animate in and then I want his head to zoom in. So let's... Uh, Blind his head for now and let's just animate the background. So for the background, I'm going to go over to effects and I'm gonna to go to motion tile. I'm gonna bring motion tile over the background and I'm going to go to the output width. I'm gonna make this be 400. So what this is basically doing is when I go into the background and I go to transform and I change the position, it's actually duplicating it outside of frame. And that's going to be important in just a second. Um, I forgot to click on mirror edges. That's very important. It's going to make the edge a lot more smoother um, because the edges are mirrored as opposed to it being just straight duplicates. What I'm going to do is I'm going to keyframe this so that it comes in. So actually, let's bring the position over out this way. Create a keyframe right here. We're going to uh, click on the stopwatch to initiate our keyframes. I'm gonna drag the playhead out a little bit. I'm gonna create another keyframe here and I'm going to drag this way back. Alrighty, let's see how this looks. All right, I think we want this to go a little bit faster. So we're gonna drag the two keyframes closer together. Okay, let's see how this looks. All right, we're gonna bring this resolution to quarter just so stuff runs a little bit smoother. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight each of these keyframes. I'm gonna right click them, go to keyframe, go to keyframe assistant, go to easy ease. And then um, you might have seen this in another tutorial. That's gonna just basically give it, give uh, a little bit of a elasticity with the movement so it's not quite linear. And I wanna actually change that elasticity even more. Go to the graph editor, click on the parameter that you wanna change, the position. Also make sure that this is on edit speed graph as well. And then what you're gonna do is you're going to basically change the graph so that it is very much weighted to the left side and click off the speed graph and see how this looks. 
Perfect. Looks beautiful. Let's bring this a little bit further out. Perfect. Maybe even a little bit further out. Let's see how this looks. Perfect. Okay. And one last thing I want to do for the background is I want to activate motion blur. So you activate motion blur right there. And then you go to the toggle switches and then you have to activate. That's the global most, that's the global activation for the motion blur. And you got to activate it on each layer as well. So let's look how that looks. It looks beautiful. Okay, cool. So now background's done. Now let's uh, click on this head. Let's see how this looks. Okay, that looks pretty good. But what I want to do is I actually want this head to be animated. I want this head to animate and come in. So I want this head. I'm going to click on activate keyframes again. All right, and then I'm going to create a keyframe a little bit out. And I'm going to go back to that first keyframe. I'm going to move Rayma out. Perfect. Okay, now let's see how this looks. That looks horrible. So let's uh, highlight both these keyframes. Go to keyframe assistant. Go to easy ease like we did before. And then let's go over to the graph editor. Uh, we have the position parameter of the head clicked and we're going to weight this over to the left. And then we're going to go and we're gonna see how this looks again. Cool, okay, looks pretty good. Let's uh, make this come in a little bit sooner. Background go, Rayma go, perfect, perfect. I'm just plan to play around a little bit more. Okay, I don't want him to, I want him to come in. I want him to stop a little bit sooner. Perfect, a little bit sooner. All right, we'll play around with that a little bit later if we need to. Let's work on the the uh, text. Okay, cool. So now uh, we're just doing. We're just gonna start on this text um special guest actually to be honest this was on the original poster i actually didn't like that so actually i'm gonna take it off i'm not gonna actually i'm gonna let's just delete that let's hope uh, samuel doesn't mind <laughs> that we tweaked his poster so i'm just gonna do this for live concert i'm gonna go in i'm going to transform this i'm gonna keyframe the position create another keyframe i'm gonna go to the first first keyframe i'm gonna make it start from out of frame you guys probably know what keyframes are at this point, so I don't have to explain it too much, but I'm just basically making it start out of frame. I'm gonna highlight both of these, keyframe assist, do the easy ease that I've already been talking about. We're gonna go and wait it to the left. And then we're going to see how this looks. Okay, live concert. Okay, it's coming in pretty good. I love the elasticity of the animation that we made. Okay, cool. It's pretty good. Okay, live concert. Okay, that animation is done. Check. Let's go to Wahala Room. All right. Don't you love how we made Wahala Room come underneath the head layer so that it looks like it's behind him? That was pretty good. Um, that would not have been possible if we didn't cut Rayma out in Photoshop, if you remember. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this. We're going to actually make this be a 3D layer, I believe is how I want to do it. Because what I'm going to do, what I'm going to try is I want to activate keyframes. I'm going to create a keyframe behind this one. And I want this to literally come out in the from the Z direction and then land where it ends up landing. So I'm actually coming outward in the Z direction. Let's see how this looks. Whoa, OK, what did I do? I forgot. I want to create some elasticity, keyframe assistant, easy ease. You're gonna, you're gonna be able to memorize this in the back of your head by now. What's the next thing? We wanna of course go over to the graph. Let's click just on position. Remember you guys remember this has to be on speed graph. Sometimes it doesn't automatically stay on that. So you gotta always remember speed graph. Okay, let's go back and see how this looks. Perfect, perfect, live concert. Wahala room, let's make this come a little bit faster. And then um, let's go over to Rayma. Rayma is right there. Okay, how about for this one? Let's go over to Rayma and animate the position. Click create a keyframe here. Let's create a keyframe here. Um, for this one, yep, I want this to be a 3D layer as well so that I can go in the uh, Z direction. I want this to come in from the Z direction as well. Do the same thing. We're gonna create keyframe assistant, easy ease. Click on this parameter motion. And we want to make sure that again, it's weighted to the left, the graph. There we go. Let's have this coming a little bit faster. Perfect. This is beautiful guys. Look at this. 
presents, ha, ah, why not? We will keep presents. So what we're gonna do for this one, I literally just want presents to fade in. So I'm gonna go to transform. I'm just gonna keyframe the opacity. So let's uh, keyframe the opacity, create a keyframe, go to the first keyframe, make the opacity be zero. And it will then go from zero to 100%. Yeah, it looks horrible. Wow, uh, wow okay. Uh, the, this should be zero, not 10. Let's bring it to zero. There we go. And you know what? Why don't we just add a little bit of elastic elasticity to the fade? And the cool thing is you can add elasticity to any animated keyframe parameter that you do, whether it be opacity or, pos or position. Let's do the exact same that we, thing that we did before. We're going to go to the graph editor, weight it, towards the, weight it towards the left, and let's look, see how this looks. This looks great. So now we're going to go back to the main comp, if you remember, the, uh, the master comp. We're going to then take another look at how this looks, wait for it to load. Last thing that we have to do is we have to export this puppy. So we're going to go to file. We're going to then go to export and we're going to go to add to Adobe Media Encoder Q. Adobe Media Encoder will then pop up. We're going to go to format. We want this to be H.264 so we can upload this to Instagram. Let's choose the name. Uh, yeah, let's call it Rayma Inst. How about Rayma IG Animation? Why not? Okay, um, okay, match source, that's perfect. Height and the width are perfect. Frame rate is perfect, 24 frames per second. Container is MP4 and the Kodak is H.264. That's all you gotta do. And we're gonna click OK. And we're going to press play. Perfect, now let's go over to the final exported file. Guys, feel free to use this technique when you're trying to animate just any type of static poster that has, you know, maybe text and a person and a background that you can kind of separate and add a little bit of movement. It'll just make stuff look a little bit more interesting, especially when you're trying to post it to Instagram or to any kind of website. You know, it's, it's always cooler and more engaging when you make it a video as opposed to just leaving it be a static photo. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and as always, remember to keep it chill. Guys, we have finished yet another incredible tutorial. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, remember to keep it chill.